Hi, this is Michael Ordonia of the Los Angeles Times. We're here at San Diego Comic-Con at the Photo and Video Studio with cast members of Star Trek Discovery and Star Trek Short Treks. Hello. 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 Thank you so much for coming by. A lot of big news dropped today. Uh, I'm quite sure the fans know who all of you are, but let's have you introduce yourselves anyway. David, could you start? Hi, guys. My name is David Ajala, and I'm playing Booker Cleveland. Cleveland Booker. Hmm. Book for short. That's how we do. Do they ever say the book? <laughs> Sometimes. Uh, he's too cool to have the article. It's just a book. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, all just, right. Just book. I kind of okay. like the book. The, like bo the, the book, book is cool. And there's, there's a lot of um, screen uh, character description directions in the script that says he reads people well. Oh, <laughs> and I, I, there I you missed go. that. I get it. That's so good. I missed that. Yeah. Um, I don't know how I missed it, but I digress. And, yeah. and you play a character no one's ever heard of who's. Uh, yeah, I don't think yeah know. brand new character. Uh, <laughs> I'm Ethan Peck, and I play Mr. Spock, reprising the role of Mr. Spock. Hmm. Who is he again? Yeah, who is, oh, yeah. Spock? Yeah, who is uh, Spock? You'll see. Uh, He's a science discovery. officer, guys. <laughs> yeah. oh, right, He's just a science officer. For sure. Oh, I got you. <laughs> okay. He's like logical <laughs> and stuff. Uh, uh, Rebecca. I'm Rebecca Romaine, and I play, I'm reprising the role of number one, yes. also from the very, very first episode of the original series, played by Major Barrett Rodberry, Gene Roddenberry's. Oh, yeah. Yes. That's it. Iconic, to <laughs> say the least. <laughs> I'm Sonequa Martin-Green. I play Michael Burnham. Woohoo! Yay! Yay. Woo. Welcome. Um, now, obviously, the the big question in all fans' minds of of, of discovery mm -hmm. has to be, what in the world is going to happen a thousand years from where we where we left off and at the end yeah. of the season? Um, obviously, they have snipers trained on you right now. <laughs> right. <laughs> Tasers ready to be dropped. So, what can you tease us with that that we're going to see? That's that we've never seen before. Well, the beauty of going into the future, boldly, mm -hmm, I yes, might add, yes. pun intended, is that everything is new. Mm -hmm. So everything that you will see will be new. And we were able, blessed, to shoot in Iceland um, for the first episode of season three. And you are going to see a world that you've never seen before. And we are not in Terra Elysium. We did not end there like we planned. So now we have to figure out where we are, mm. when we are, and who we are at this point now. So it's very, um, it's very innervating to say the least to be able to build canon moment to moment. Yeah, I was gonna say canon. I, I didn't know you guys shot in Iceland. It's gonna be something very different. Yeah. Um, but you're now freed from canon. Yeah, in a <laughs> sense, yeah. It, you know, but we, we're still, um, the, the canon is still where we come from. It's still mm -hmm. our foundation, it's our root. Um, and so we still are who we are. You know, Alex Kurtzman, um, our, our showrunner, along with Michelle Paradise, who's co-show running now, mm -hmm. and we love her. Um, you know, he said earlier that we're not going to take away anything that has been established. Everything still is what it is. It's just that now we basically carry the Star Trek that we all know into a future that we don't know. Well, very, very articulately put. Oh, My well, thank you. Drop. <laughs> uh, um, what, can you, what can you tell us about book? Ah, uh, Mr. Cleveland Booker. Mm -hmm. uh, I know, right? Uh, he is... Uh, he's a guy on a very personal mission. He um, lives by his own set of rules. And he's going to add something quite unique in season three. Again, because you know we're departing away mm -hmm. from the canon, it just leaves a lot of room and scope to reach new territory. Now, I guess you're probably the best person to answer, answer this, Sonequa, um, again about departing from canon. Does it, uh, is there a, a feeling of freedom in the writing now that, uh, uh, that's tangible that you can really feel from before? Yeah, I think so. I mean, I think we, um, you know, th th there's a whole host of, of artists um, that are in our company, right, that are so gifted and talented, but also so present and engaged and passionate about what we're doing. And so from the very beginning, we tried to establish ourselves as something new, but something familiar at the same time. Mm -hmm. And so we, being connected to canon like we are, and being from 2256 like we are, you know, there were so many things that, um, that we progressed, but we did it in, in the spirit of... Um, paying homage to the very essence of Star Trek and the spirit of Star Trek, which is innovation, and it's uh, to point to the future, mm -hmm. right? And so we wanted to continue to do that, even though we were from a time before. So that was a very delicate and um, difficult 
uh, line for us to tow. And so now um, we were excited before, but now we're more excited than, than, than ever because now you have all of this, um, you have so much more um, room to create. Mm. Um, but again, we always have the same foundation. So I thought it was genius because we get to be who we are, but then we get to boldly go and do what we never thought we'd be able to do. And I think that's the case. I think everybody across the board in all the departments feel that way. I've, as a fan, yeah, I'm a fan. Um, I, I've always <laughs> Love it. thought it was, I've always thought it was, uh, it's always haunted me a little bit that we never heard of Discovery before and you know they, mm. they wiped the records. But uh, the fact that you guys have gone somewhere else makes makes people like me go, are they ever coming back? Mm. Because we never heard of them. Uh, right. So, okay, uh, Ethan and Rebecca, I don't know how much you can tell us about your- We don't either. We're we can't tell you anything. We can't tell you anything. <laughs> <laughs> um, we can tell you a bit. There, were, there were six shorts that were shot and yeah. three of them uh, are based on the Enterprise, Yeah. which is obviously, we're going to adhere very closely to the canon. Um, our characters are pre-established. Mm -hmm. My character never really, uh, we didn't learn very much about her, and so we actually get to take some artistic liberties and, and explore her a little bit more. Um, yeah, we get to interface these two characters that, um, obviously Spock has this, went on to have a very long history, and number one, uh, played by Major Barrett, only appeared in that first episode. Mm -hmm. And so it's just so fun to Before put them together. Before coming back as Nurse Chapel. Right. right. Um, and it's so fun to put them together and see what they do and how they feel about each other and what they say to each other. And these, and these shorts are all anachronistic, self-contained, standalone stories. They're just re beautiful, beautifully written little stories. And Ethan and I did one together called Q&A that's just this incredible, we get, it's early on. He's Ensign, he's Ensign Spock, he's just arrived. Um, he's Spock. a science officer, I'm his <laughs> superior. And we get stuck on a turbo lift and um, this beautiful, something happens on that turbo lift that will forever bond our characters. It's don't fantastic. You, don't you imagine he'd be like the most annoying ensign if you were his superior? Because he's like better at two than everyone. Uh, um, <laughs> you'll, have to, you'll have to tune uh, in. <laughs> shall see. Were, were you going to say something about that? No, well, no, you were so, that's such an interesting. That was very astute. <laughs> very astute of you. Uh, um, but so no, I was just going to say we were able to, in season two, we returned to canon and we returned to, to more of a traditional truck that people are used to. Mm -hmm. And that has a lot to do with these two. Mm -hmm. And it has a lot to do with Anson Mount, who played Captain Pike. Yeah. And we were able to, you know, see these iconic characters, arguably the most iconic character in the entire canon. And, you know, one of the most brilliant actors and, and, and definitely one of my favorite scene partners as well. So it was, it was such, yeah, mm -hmm. it was, it was so amazing to be able to have you and have you and have, um, and have that, that, um, that showcase of who we really are and where we really come from. Mm -hmm. And so I love that we lost them, unfortunately, because it would have broken canon to keep them. Mm -hmm. And we lost a lot of people that have been there from the very beginning that have, you know, built the ground that we stand on, but it was really amazing mm. to have them now in, the, in this short trick. Oh, just to step onto the set of the Enterprise was oh, yeah. a pinch me moment. Just stepping. So you were a fan? Yeah, I was a Trekkie growing up, yeah. Oh, nice. I used to watch with my mom, the original series with my mom, which is, you know, just getting fit, fitted in the original gold uniform just made me teary-eyed. See, I knew you were super cool. You're from Berkeley. <laughs> you're, you're in the X-Men. You're a Mystique, you know, come on. So, uh, what are we doing here with, with her? Uh, Everybody's like, <laughs> I love oh, it. Wow. Uh, so about the, the short track, so you're in, you're in three of them? Or uh, we can't say. Yeah, oh, we can't okay. say. Yeah, that's true. Nice can try, you tell Romain. me anything Someone about? Just answered. You almost got me. <laughs> can you tell them any? Th tell me anything about who wrote them? Because there's some some names are floating through here. M Michael Chabon. He wrote, did. Yeah, yes. he wrote ours. He wrote ours, and, and it's really it's one of the most beautifully written ah, pieces I've it's ever. Treat. It's yeah. really a treat. Yeah. Nice. Fantastic. An another uh, Berkeley. That's another right. Berkeley. Yeah. Lives in Berkeley. Yeah. See. Two of his kids went to Berkeley High. Then I think now, one goes there right now. now Our we, high school. This whole interview is going to be about, about Berkeley. Boom. Berkeley. <laughs> yeah. It's a Berkeley ad. It's a small world. Um, okay, now, this, it, one of the great things for fans about season two was seeing characters whom we knew and loved, even though, as I was saying about the, being haunted by the notion of discovery, we're haunted by the notion of Captain Pike because we know where he goes. Um, but I don't, you're not going to have that advantage in season three, I don't think. I mean, what characters could possibly show up except maybe Q or maybe Guinan lives that long? 
So is there any? We'll find out. I mean, this oh. one represents new legends. This, this new world that mm -hmm. we land in, it's you true. know, and it, you're really going to love him. Um, we're so excited to have him. Um, so but, great to be joining. Yeah. And it's 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 really this world is very interesting and it's intoxicating and it's exotic because it's brand new. And what happened in this in this world? I, I heard a lot of people say when they found out that we were going to be a prequel, they said, mm -hmm. you know, well, what happened after Voyager? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I mean? Did nothing happen after Voyager? And so it's so exciting to be, you know. Yeah. From then, but also come here. That's you know? right. You're, you're what happened before Anything the original happen. series. You're what happened after Voyager now. That, yeah. Oh, uh, that is sweet. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, this, none of the Tarantino stuff is confirmed, no matter how hard I twisted Kurtzman's arm. Mm. I think next time I'll use a, I'll use a phaser on stun. I gotcha. Um, <laughs> Effective. But what they're, what they're whispering is that the cast is, or the characters are original series characters. Doesn't it bug you that they're that Tarantino's not writing a discovery movie? You know, Tarantino is 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 the, the the brilliant visionary that he is. I'm just very interested to see what he does. What what is Trek through his lens? What do you guys think about that? Because you know, in response to a question, he didn't like come out and say it's gonna be Pulp Fiction in Space. Somebody said it's not gonna be Pulp Fiction in Space. And he said, Oh yeah? So what do you guys think about uh, Tarantino maybe making an R-rated Trek movie? I think we all lose if we don't get that. I mean, can you imagine, yeah, like, this ridiculous. universe imagined, you know, through Tarantino? Through Tarantino? Yeah. I'm all for it. Same. Definitely. Yeah, I'm curious. You know, one of the, yeah. I'm sure you heard one of the criticisms from fans of, of Discovery was, it doesn't feel like a Star Trek, it doesn't look like one. I say, good, good, let's broaden let's let's right. do new things mm -hmm. right Innovation. because it, yeah exactly there it, it's it's as if with with discovery star trek went through a maturation process one of our um one of our old executive producers said uh once years ago akiba goldsman actually he said i don't believe that this is very dark and he's a hardcore trek fan since he was a child i think he went to the very first con there ever was mm -hmm. uh, for star trek and he said it's just that we remember what happened yesterday and he mm. said, if everybody remembered what happened yesterday, automatically there, it would have a, a grittier feel because you have to remember what you've lost. Mm -hmm. And because we were placed in 2256 at the time of the Klingon War, which was a big decision by Brian Fuller and Alex Kurtzman, who created the show, um, we're at war. And wartime is wartime. Mm -hmm. And so I think that it's not so much that it's dark, it's that we remember. And also, um, you see us fighting for this uh, world, for, this, for this, this utopian, you know, um, world of universality it takes a fight and you mm. get to see us doing that and so in a way I feel that it's more hopeful mm. because you see the actual fight and then you see us win well I think of the MCU and what they've accomplished mm. and the fact that they they make a point of making each movie different it's yeah. they have different directors they have different feels they have you know mm. different genre even within yeah. the superhero umbrella so when I when I see how different discovery looks I say right on Let's let's let Trek grow and and be new things as well. At its heart, it's about innovation, isn't yes, it? That's yeah. right. uh, okay, I've got to ask some Comic Con questions before I let you guys go. <laughs> uh, I imagine. Okay, Boom. you two have probably been to a thousand Comic Cons. Have you guys been to Comic Cons before? This is my second. Second. I was here last year. Oh. But I didn't really hang around like after getting announced for a show oh. that I was working on. I kind of just left as soon as it was announced so, for my own peace of mind. So this is the first time embracing it all. And I've had fun and I've been able to hang out with these guys, which has been really awesome. You like us? Quite a lot, actually. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's good to hear. Yeah, like That's how much point. do you like, like us? How much do you like yeah. On a one to 10? Yeah, like this morning it was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And like now it's like. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so <laughs> what, have you, what have you seen at any Comic-Con that, that like blew your mind. Well, it's Ethan's first Comic Con, so yeah. what have you seen? Oh, yeah. yeah, for sure. Anything today that's blown your mind, Ethan? Um, <laughs> all of it. I mean, like five years ago, I was like, I would love to be brought to Comic Con uh, as a part of a show. Mm -hmm. And for it to be this is just like totally outrageous. And to walk out into the stage of Hall H and the sea of people it was just like, I don't know, feels like a dream. I once saw a purple mystique. We were in a, a van getting transported to the next thing because that's how we get around mm -hmm. here. And I was like, don't make me get out of this van. <laughs> 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 well, maybe, maybe it was mystique as a Prince fan. Maybe, oh. 
That's oh, a nice well, combo. look at that. Yeah. You better see. optimistic spin you put on that. She, she, I mean, she can make herself anything. And Prince she was like, as well. listening that's, to Purple that Rain, that's how she felt. Yeah. That was smooth. Wow. <laughs> cue the music. Cue Your the song. Your acuity is, you know, <laughs> that's, that's where it's at. I will tell you, one time I was, I was when I was here years ago, this is my fifth um, Comic-Con, somebody handed me their newborn baby, but oh. but they didn't um, <laughs> say anything. They uh, they were like, oh gosh, it's so nice to meet you. And then they, I was like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hi, hi. <laughs> it was incredible, actually. And then I actually I saw her again a couple of years later, and uh -huh. then and of course the baby was two at that point. And she was like, "This is who you were holding when she was just born." I think the baby was about a couple of weeks old. I thought you were going to say wow. she handed you the two year old, said, "This time keep, <laughs> keep her, keep, right, right. Or, Take her with oh. you." <laughs> Did you think maybe she? Like, Thank you for letting me hold your baby. You think maybe she was giving you the baby and saying, "Sasha, you know how to survive." <laughs> right. Damn. Right. We're gonna die. You live. <laughs> All right. Last question. Last Comic Con question. If you were uh, forced to cosplay, who would you cosplay? Can't be somebody you've already played. Even though. Rebecca, I know you love the idea of getting on all that blue makeup. Putting on that job. mystique costume? Yeah. Hey, thanks. Oh, I've yeah. done that. <laughs> um, wow, that's a good one. That's a really, really good one. I would. You have good ideas? Come up with... Uh, no, I... Oh, well, thank you for that. Shoot. Um, you know what? Somebody from Black Panther. One of the... Well, you'd be Akoye. both one of the... door. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, we had uh, Denine here... Oh. I, I bet you would have loved that. Deny my love. I love her. I miss her. Oh, that's my that's my girl right there. We were talking about her lady. exit from Walking Dead and and how yeah. much she how much she had uh, to play in in the way she goes out. Mm -hmm. And I said, you know, Sasha went out as a badass. You, you got to you. you got to top that. Oh man! Thank you for saying that. <laughs> yeah, I definitely, definitely. Black Panther is legit. Yeah. I, I would cosplay as Eddie Murphy from Coming to America. In the Black Panther costume. What? What? Eddie? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What? So it's Eddie Murphy from Coming to America, uh -huh. but in a Black Panther costume. Oh, oh snap. Because okay. there was a lot of crossover when folks were going to see the premiere. Some people That's were dressing right. from Coming to America, and some were dressing. That's yeah, right. it was really cool. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, because those, those are the only costumes they had that were kind uh, of. Like, a little bit of a remit there. What'd you say? It was a little bit of a remit, Coming to America. It, yeah, yeah. But like there, there is a crossover. Some well, you, you, got the, you got the mustache, sort of. Yeah. A little. Did a little, little work and on the, the fade. And yeah, a little. <laughs> a little, a little. Uh, Who would you be, Ethan? I'd probably cosplay as Michael Burnham. Just to... Uh, <laughs> just to blow uh, their uh, mind. I say Spock. Just to uh. play jokes on Sonequa. Okay, I changed my answer. I'd, yeah, I'd be Spock. Nope. I'd be nope. Spock. Do, do it. I would cosplay as E.T., but like sexy E.T. <laughs> <laughs> that put a weird image in my head. <laughs> Okay, you have started a trend for Sexy sure. E yes. For sure. You when, seen it, right? when this goes online, people are going to go, oh, I, I'm going to do that. Rebecca, Rebecca, yeah, I need doing to see it. that. Sexy okay, ET. Guys, thank you Fun so home. much for coming. I know it's been a long day for you, oh, and I, you. I know you're limited in things you got to, you had to say, but I'm sure the fans are really going to be happy to hear what you had to say. Thank you. Thank right. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.